this YouTube live stream. Oh my God, we did it, Nala. I was I featured on Miss Cat Channel. We did it. Hello, everybody. My name is Katya Shivchuk, and welcome back to Miss Cat Squad. As you guys know, I talk a lot about Life is Strange on this channel, and this is one of those times because I have a lot to say about this game. This game has a great fandom behind it. It has so many talented people within this fandom, and I really want to show my support as much as possible and spread this positivity. The topic that I'm discussing today is living in toxic small towns that can make you feel smaller than a grain of sand. Now, I live in a small town, okay? I've lived in a small town all my life, and I'm just about going to move from that small town in a few years, which I am so excited because I am sick of being here. Everyone in my family is sick of being here. Life is Strange takes place in Arcadia Bay, which is a very small town where everybody, who is anybody, knows your business. And it is so bad that with, like take Joyce's job for example, she knows every single one of the customers in there. She knows about their backstories. She knows about each and every single one of them, even Frank. Living in small towns can be completely toxic. And I might start crying in this video because I have experienced many versions of that in my past and in my present and probably not in my future, hopefully not in my future, but in the present time that I'm speaking now, I have experienced it and it is, not good. So, in Arcadia Bay, everybody knows everybody. They know your business, they know what's going on in your life, and if they have anything against you, they will use it against you. And who does that sound like, folks? The Prescott family. The freaking, freaking Prescott family. Uh, is that your punk rock girl? I think we gotta beat you. My dad doesn't hire. Oh, uh. He own, own, own. Nathan Prescott. Whatever the fuck. Sitting on the chair. Seriously. Waiting for his bright, 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 bright Keep your pie holes shut. Uh. Nathan Prescott. Get out of my space. What is he doing there? What are you supposed to keep your mouth shut up for his bright, 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 bright fist? Everybody. The Prescott family knows everyone's business. To take that for an example is definitely Principal Wells. Now, Principal Wells who is the principal of Blackwell Academy, is kind of a puppet to the Prescotts, because why? The Prescotts funded Blackwell Academy. They fund the dormitories. They fund some of the programs that go on. So Principal Wells, the guy doesn't mean bad. He's not a bad guy, as we learned further on in the episode. When Max goes to the photography exhibit, who is there? It's Principal Wells to support her. He's not a bad guy, as we see in different timelines, there is a good to Principal Wells that we learn over time, and he even has his own character development that I'll probably talk about in a different video. Principal Wells, like probably everyone in Arcadia Bay, is a puppet to the Prescott family. And if you live in a small town like I do, there's always one really wealthy family that kind of feels as if they control the entire neighborhood, or they feel as if they control the entire town. And when you do live in a small town, I'm not talking about the towns that look like they're like a city or shopping centers. I'm talking about the towns where it's like how in my town, it's so small, it's just one of those, you go on the, you go on the parkway or the highway and then you're passing through those towns to get to another town. That's the type of town I live in. And that's the type of town that Arcadia Bay is. So back to what I'm saying with Principal Wells. He, as the principal of Blackwell Academy, does not mean bad. The guy is controlled by the Prescott family because the Prescott family are the douches of Arcadia Bay. They are like, they think they are the kings and the queens and the princes of Arcadia Bay. They know how to control people because they've been in this town. As you saw when Max, as you saw when Max and Chloe went into the barn, how long have the Prescotts been in Arcadia Bay? So they have that deep rooted like family lineage that they did grow within that town. So they feel like they have control over everybody. When you also live in a small town, you kind of feel as if you have to be a people pleaser. And that is one of the most worst feelings in the world. Why? Because no one should have to feel like they have to please everyone. No one should have to feel as if they have to like out, be an outstanding student just because if they want to be an outstanding student for their own for their own merit and for their own gain, that's one thing. 
but if they are just doing it to impress someone, no one should ever have to feel forced to do that. And to use Max as an example, when she, whenever she had conversations with Nathan, he was like, you know what, your scholarship's gonna be gone down the drain. Also with David, what he said to Max is like, hey, you're token it up in here with my daughter? No, you know what, you're gonna lose your scholarship. And it feels as if Max couldn't do anything that she may have ever wanted to, and she has to be this very like, goody goody two shoes character. Like she felt in the beginning that she has to like impress all these people and stay quiet and in the corner because she had to be a people pleaser because she couldn't risk losing her scholarship. And as in the beginning, when she first came back to Arcadia Bay, she was and became part of Blackwell Academy again. She kind of showed like, hey, I'm just gonna be the student who stays quiet in the background, nods my head and has no opinion about anything. And no one should ever have to deal with that because it's a hard, it's really hard when you can't voice your opinion on something that you're passionate about or something that you want to change because when you feel as if you have to please all these people in life and you feel as if you have to like kind of like be nice to everyone even though you don't want to or agree with anybody it's it's really hard because nobody should ever have to go through that and in small towns that's part of the toxic that's part of the toxicness to it like you feel trapped you know like you really feel trapped in a tiny small town like you have no voice because all these other voices are like taking over you and you're like a small little fish in the sea because all these other big waves of voices are just crashing into you and the people who have like deep seated into that town have been there longer than you have and have these roots they feel, you feel trapped. And Max, as the character, when she came back to Arcadia Bay, she felt like, I have no voice. I shouldn't voice my opinion. I'm gonna just be quiet and listen to my music down the halls and in my high school because I have no voice. I have no reason to speak up because all these people have been here longer than I have. And it's hard. It's hard because I've been through that. I felt years ago, like I, I felt trapped. And I still feel trapped in a small town where everybody knows you and everyone can know about your past and who you've been. And I went through shit when I was young and people know that. And some people that still talk to my family were like, oh, is she still like that? Or, oh, does she still do that? And it's like those memories that you don't want there are still there in those people, the back of people's minds because they knew who you once were and they can use that freaking against you and I have relatives who freaking do that and I'm sick of it I am sick and tired of that and it kills you as a person as an individual as somebody who just wants to speak up and just tell people who you are you can't in certain small towns because these people have things against you and they'll keep using it and beating you down until you just crash and crumble because they know who you once were and it's never right it's never right and in life is strange they, they capture that perfectly and that's one of the things where I felt so related to because Max is this character I, I I related more to like Victoria and and Chloe and everyone but Max is this character showed us that in these small towns it ruins you now look at Chloe Look how Chloe is, look what she's went through. Look how many things that people hold over her freaking head just because she made a few mistakes in life. Just because she rebelled and was this, she wasn't conformed to what these people in this town felt like she had to be. Look what they did to her. And instead of supporting her, instead of being there or giving her freaking family money, when her father died, because everyone knows your freaking business in Arcadia Bay. Everyone knows your freaking business there. They literally, the Prescott family did nothing but mock her. They did nothing but literally drag her down and literally just make fun of her and, and mock her family. Give her family issues and problems instead of literally just taking the time to understand that the Price family needed help. And in this life, this is what we go through. This is, these type of people exist. And instead of helping the people who need it the most, so many people forget about them. They forget about the broken. 
They forget about the misfits. They forget about the outcasts and the people who say no or have their own voice. This is what small towns do to people. And Life is Strange showed us that. That something's gotta change. No wonder Rachel and Chloe wanted to leave. They wanted to start over. They wanted to have a new life because everyone knew them. Everyone knew their freaking business. All the crap that Rachel probably went through in her past and also what she was going through, she just wanted to leave. She was desperate for fame because she wanted to have that voice. She wanted to stand out in the crowd and have that voice. And Chloe just wanted an escape. And she couldn't find it because in that town it was hell. But when Max came back, they kind of went through that hell together. No one should ever, in the place that they are living, if you feel trapped or like just consumed by this negative atmosphere where everyone knows you in your past, and they know who you are and what you do in life. And everyone can use that all against you. That's not home. And it never will be home. And you got to get the hell out. You need to leave and start over because if you feel that, that toxicness in the air and people are pinning you down and holding things against you because they know they can do that because they want to ruin you, that's not home. And Life is Strange shows us that, that Arcadia Bay was not home for these girls and for these characters. Because look what they went through. Look what Jefferson did. Jefferson literally took these girls and, and they thought, these people thought, oh, he's a prestige, he teaches at a prestigious academy. Nothing could go wrong. Oh, look at his, look how much he's done. Oh, he's in connection with the Prescott family. He's a good guy, he's a good guy. And all this could have been prevented what Jefferson did. All of this could have been prevented if people took the time to not understand the prestigious people, to not understand those who are rich and those who are wealthy, not just understand them all the time, but understand the misfits of this freaking world because sometimes those are the voices that need to be heard. And those are the voices that deserve to be heard. So if you are trapped in a small town and you feel like you cannot leave and these people are haunting you with things in your past and it doesn't matter what age you are, you feel trapped, you have a right to leave that town and start over. You have a, a right to leave and just create a new life for you. No matter where it is or how you do it, you have that right. Just like these girls in Life is Strange, just like all these characters had a right to just start over. And in the endings that I did chose, I chose, in a way, I don't regret choosing that ending that I did, but at the same time, I kind of do because Max was trapped there. And the only thing that is giving me this type of like feeling that I did, I chose correctly in my first gameplay of it is because maybe Max had the confidence to become a famous photographer and to get her work out there and maybe not have the confidence to doubt herself anymore. And that is what's getting me through not picking the other ending because in the other ending, they left. They left Arcadia Bay behind they started over and everyone deserves a right to just start over I'm sorry for getting so dramatic <laughs> but still I I know that this is it's it's not just a game to some people it's not it's an experience and when stories like this touch our hearts so much and teach us so many amazing lessons it shows us that it happens in real life and this happens in real life I'm living that life that you just feel like you want to just put those headphones on and escape reality because in that scene when Max does put her headphones on and she her earbuds in and she's listening to music she just wanted to escape she wanted to go in her own little world because this small town was ruining her just like the small town was ruining all the characters and that's one of the lessons that we do learn, not every town, but a lot of towns, a lot of small towns like that, this toxicness does happen. And it needs to be acknowledged and these misfits need to be heard. So that's why I did address this today because not only is it personal to me, and I would love to, I would love to tell you more about what my experiences in this stupid small town that I do live in, but it, 
it happens to a lot of people and if you guys do live in a small town you know how it feels you you know how it feels like you just want to escape but you you feel like you're in a pit and you're just keep climbing but keep falling down just keep climbing and falling down over and over again and when you finally do reach the top there's people just throwing rocks at you again and you fall and that's what it feels like to me when i'm trapped here because there's so many things that people who feel trapped can do with their life and go other places and explore and adventure but if you're trapped you can't do any of that and that's another great lesson that i did take from life is strange because it happens and it needs to be acknowledged i want to know your opinions on this i get very passionate and emotional when i do talk about life is strange but this this is just who i am and what i do and yeah i mean I hope you do enjoy the content that I do give you, but I do get very emotional about it because I do love these characters. They're like very real to me and I know you guys love the characters as well, but I wanna know your opinions on small towns, not just small towns in like, not just like Arcadia Bay, but I wanna know small towns in general. What do you think of them? Do you live in one? Do you feel like you're trapped? If you do feel trapped, you have a right to leave and start over. There's always a reset button on life. There's always the rewind as in like in Life is Strange, you can always rewind it and you could always restart your life whenever you want, whenever, any time. You could just do it any time out there because it's never too late. No matter how, if you're young or old, there's always time to restart and be the person that you've always wanted to be. So just take this advice with a grain of salt. But this is just my advice to you today is if you feel trapped, do something about it. If you want to restart your life, do it. If you want to be a different person completely as you were five seconds ago, be that person. Because you have the right to do that and nobody could tell you otherwise. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you need anything, just please let me know. Tag me on Twitter. Talk to me on Twitter. Also, leave comments down below. The squad members will always be here for you. And as always, Miss Cats, until the next video, embrace your inner fangirl and your inner fanboy every single day.